Ladies and gentlemen, this is the insect tier list by the channel Tier Zoo. Now, first things first. If any creator like Tier Zoo here basically uh, don't like me reacting to their stuff, uh, you know, de comment down or something to you know asking me to stop reacting to. I will definitely stop reacting to your content and remove all the content that are already reacted to or something, or email me or whatever, whatever you want to do. But yeah, definitely contact me, right? Uh, because I, I I don't do this professionally, right? Uh, I, I do this because I don't do much of social media, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, whatever. So this is social media to me. This is more like a venting thing, right? Um, you know, I'm I'm civil contractor. That's my day job. That's what I do. Uh, when I come back at night, this is like my venting thing uh, to get all the stress out. I like to, you know, this is give me excuse to watch things. Otherwise, I'll be like, why the fuck would I watch this? Let's play some game or something. But that's why I do this, right? Uh, so tell me if you don't want me to react to your stuff, I will take it all down. And yeah, let's do it. Play of the game. Your power down. You Insects are one of the most broken factions the game has ever seen. Damn. Nowhere else in nature will you find such an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered, but also extremely unique. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group, because in a lot of cases it's not just that their individual abilities are overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely OP when used in combination with one another. This camouflage thing reminded me there was a video of a bug that looked like a leaf. And I'm like, oh, look at that CGA bullshit. That no way in hell that's real. <laughs> and then I realized that shit is real. And that just creeped me out since then, right? For a month, whenever I ate something that has any kind of a vegetable, like lettuce or something, I was always scared. Like, wait a minute, let me check that first. You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list. But first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes and history. Insects were added to the game during the early Carboniferous expansion. Mm. The devs bumped up the atmospheric oxygen level, which allowed members of the Arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities. And while most of the Arthropod player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, a small offshoot of the Crustacean player base opted to forego the Gigantism trait, and instead used this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game, Flight. Because these new creatures were the very first to gain the ability to fly, the air became entirely their domain for the time being, and would remain that way until reptiles unlocked the ability several expansions later. Insects are extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads. In fact, they're so diverse that it's impossible to include them all in a single video. I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be discussing today have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. So it's a little tough to pin down their general attributes, but there are a few commonalities. Being members of the Arthropod faction, all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk, which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player levels up. This makes insects quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. All right, if you see my face just scrunched up like that, that's because insects somewhat creep me out. That's been the case since I was, you know, very small, very right years ago, when I was a kid, like what, five, six years, I don't know, I don't remember exactly. But since then, cockroaches, any kind of insect, like, ew. It's not much of fear, it's, I don't know, I don't know how to exp ex explain this, it's just grossness, right? Ugh. I don't know why, right? Even though after watching all this scientific video, it's just like, you know, it, does, it doesn't, you know, the grossness usually comes from unknown, right? You see cockroaches, how fast they run, how slow, sometimes they just, you know, walk, you know, very jaggedy or something and just, oh, what is it, hurt or something? It just creeps you out. Oh, I don't want to touch that. What if it just, you know, fucking breaks in my hand or something? There's always this kind of a grossness to it. When you watch this, uh, all these different type of videos, you shouldn't be gross up, but still, it's a phobia, basically. I don't know. It's an ins... If phobia means I can't, I cannot even be in the presence of something, can't even touch it or something, then I don't have phobia, but I'm grossed out somewhat. Combat. The insect build also has access to the compound eyes perk, which grants them vastly improved awareness compared to other Damn, arthropods like shit. scorpions and centipedes. With 360 degree vision, 
Their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying oh, is far superior to most oh. other flyers. This enhanced perception perk is important because insects tend to have naturally high stealth. So in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. Well, I didn't even see that before, I don't know how, but this is a 28 minute video, damn, so you really went to depth in this one. You really put his time into this one. At the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect, and not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, which decided to respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined this strategies, is epic. the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. Create a bridge, Aside man. from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, with their only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their special ability allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to urban areas, feeding on things like paper and cloth, in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Even there, they aren't completely safe though. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities places it firmly in F tier. That's honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Yeah, I've seen this I think. I think these things are in India. I'm pretty sure this is the one. Crawls on walls and suddenly runs away. Like, what the fuck is that? But apparently they're weakest of them all. Hmm, that is interesting. Most insects are quite viable, and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game. Damn, look at that second shit! Second only to color changing builds like the Octopus and Chameleon. As impressive as these are though, the question I constantly- Oh my god, and this is the first time I'm seeing that shit happening. Look at how he changes color, the octopus or whatever. Look at this! Like the Octopus what and the Chameleon. Fuck? As impressive as these are though, the question I constantly oh, here end up it asking comes, the is, leaf one. is this Whoa. really necessary? Because with the exception of insects which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposomatic coloration strategy, insects as a whole already have an above average stealth, and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more, rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. <laughs> Some phasmids do possess chemical defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, oh. this attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids have a similar game plan to Yeah, mantis, right? Uh, I remember, you know, since I was a kid hearing this, like green mantis like that, if it's a green, right? I don't know if it's only applied to green, obviously not, that wasn't green. But, you know, you should avoid that because if it, you know, sprays something like that, it will burn your skin, right? Literally acid. And since then, I'm like, holy shit, that's a, you know, that, that's a green, I just run away from that. Anything green, I just run away from I know that's going to have some kind of a, a poison or acid to it. Sloths complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. Although at least Phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. <laughs> what the fuck? Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat, with extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits, literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Lepid player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars and adult Lepids alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in, and some designed to intimidate. 
Granted, these strategies often don't hold up against high intelligence builds, but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, like spines and toxins, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility and can fly much greater distances than most in- Can we take a minute and just appreciate the tears you can always find a clip of something? He wanted to talk about this specific bug like how, you know, so any predator just is not going to take chances with that. And he found that clip, specific clip, like holy shit, there's a clip for that. Somebody actually took a camera, went to the, you know, wherever and actually waited for that to take effect. <laughs> Insect builds. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas of the map and reach higher quality loot that might be too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable for a look variety of like stealth ice. or intimidation purposes, also just make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, leopards still take plenty of L's, and most high-tier insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against them, so they're definitely a below-average faction. That's actually it for D-tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively quickly. successful faction, and are going to be concentrated in the higher tier. Yeah, these are just bottom tier, and they, they're not much there either. And it's already like seven minute video. How is that quickly? Tears. <laughs> At the bottom of C tier, we have the cockroach. Oh no! The cockroach is the ultimate survivor, which opted to spec into mobility, stealth, and a multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, but they do have an above average ground movement speed, enabling them to quickly scurry to cover if they see a predator player approaching. However, when <laughs> that's caught- That's another thing, man. That's, not, that's why I, you know, I get creeped out by cockroaches. They can fly, but not much. I mean, I don't know, man. They sometimes walk like somebody hurt the cockroaches. Sometimes, you know, jaggedy walk is like, oh, what is it hurt? <laughs> and then it flies, but can't fly completely. It just jumps like, you know, leaves from place to place. I don't know why that's just creepy, right? If there's a cockroach on me, like, ah, what the fuck, I'll just run away. Caught <laughs> out in the open or backed into a corner, they're fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. They're also somewhat carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them, because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Next in C tier, we have the Earwig, a fearsome looking generalist build, which appears to have- Why does it have the name Earwig? Oh God, don't tell me what I'm thinking. Have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end, called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal, and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. And even against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an Earwig, and can attack without restraint. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the Earwig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups against soft-bodied insects, and allow the Earwig to carry their targets much better than they could with their jaws. And while it may seem silly to have opted for rear-facing weapons instead of the more typical forward-facing- What forward the fuck facing is this? Somebody actually went to a tree branch or something, took this photo while there's a mountain in behind. Who's this, who's this guy, man? This is, this is peak photography, isn't it? This is like, that guy's like, yeah, this is, this is what I lived for, right? Every education, every learning things is just paying off now. Look at this shit, look at the whole scene. ...ones like mandibles and rostrums. The position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid-tier, Earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. They would do well to spec into some sort of Venom, 
venom-infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid-tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. Mm. At there the top of C-tier, we've got the Orthopterans, including Grasshoppers, Crickets, and Katydids. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes Mantis, Grasshopper, Crickets. Why am I mixing all three of them up? Are they all the same family or something? Mantis is like those big... Th this is a Mantis, right? Oh, that's a Mantis. That's a Grasshopper. I don't know why I'm mixing them up. Yeah, that's a fucking Mantis right there. ...comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, as it allows the user what? to get what? out of reach what? and attack's range. This? But this utility is lessened <laughs> if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag. And so, instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, a powerful jump enables the Orthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an Orthopteran can feel near impossible at times. What the fuck? And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs... What is this? Is 60 frames? No, it's not 60 frames. <laughs> it didn't even see... It just fucking disappeared out of frame. How fast that was. ...can function as quite an effective combo break. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal, meaning that if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing serious damage to the attacker. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option Literally can sometimes end up faith. putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players, and although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright or one-hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. At the bottom of B tier we have the Hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield-shaped. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access, like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility, making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. Some do break this trend though, and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic mobility, making them some of the most fearsome aquatic builds in the game. On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some Phasmids, which is where they get the name Stink Bugs from. However, similar to Phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit lacking, and often fail to deter attackers. So certainly a group with some standout members, and fine for XP farming, but still nothing too broken. And topping off B tier we have the- Yeah, what's gonna be in the top tier man? Insects? Mosquitoes? Mosquitoes is the biggest predator in the world, regardless of category, right? Just because of the kill count. Does that make it an S tier? I'm sh I don't know, those kind of stats don't matter to Tia Zoo. Tia Zoo sees like pound for pound, basically, in every stat. How is it better, right? These defenses, in which meta it is, does it survive? But then again, uh, mosquitoes thrives, you know, by sucking blood of anything. And obviously, you know, because of the kill count, clearly they are thriving in places. So I don't know, it must be S tier, right? I don't know.
the Neuroptera, a rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats, genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. However, looking at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator build oh, for yeah. any player who prefers the camping playstyle. I think he said this in one of the videos, right? I'm pretty sure I remember Tears of video where he says like, you know, this larval form is much de deadlier than the, yeah. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their defense. size. Ant lions have a devastating venomous bite which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive Still stealth rating sky is extremely right? high, making their ambush playstyle unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, making escape a near impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuropteran larvae, but in short, they are what the Earwig pretends to be. If you took the Earwig Cersei, put them in front and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an antlion. So why the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time Rings. at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find each other and complete the mating questline, uh. something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. There you go, Mantis. Okay, seriously, man. There are lots of insects and basically different type of animals who basically their whole existence is just basically survive the, you know, the birth and, you know, the growing up period. And as soon as they become adult, all their job is to mate and die. Lots of people say, what do, what do humans do, right? Uh, they grow up, learn something, then just clock out eight hour jobs and then they die. You know, wake up, eat, do job and die. What the fuck they did, you know, what the fuck anybody really did. But that's the case with most animals around the world, isn't it? I mean, this is why, you know, watching some, you know, videos like that, biological, zoological type of video can actually paint a good picture. Like, it's not just about humans, it's about every animal around the world is kind of doing that. I mean, what else are you going to do, right? Of course, you know, if you can contribute to, you know, society by being scientists or whatever, sure. But yeah, that is life is, right? You wake up, do your thing, go to sleep, and that's your life all. I mean, doesn't matter what you do, you can simplify it to that. At the bottom of A tier, we have a personal favorite of mine, the Mantis. Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle consisting of, many. of slashing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed they easily make up for with strike speed. The Mantis's strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis's large size enables oh it to God. tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, fuck? but not one that's so invincible that Mantis mains can get careless. Next in A tier we have the Flies. This does get a bit confusing oh, yeah. due to the amount of other builds that use the word fly in their name. But this group a bit confusing due to the amount of other builds that use the word Oh, okay. So not all this fly, but house fly, deer fly, these are all the flies. I was wondering if fly means your average fly, right? One of the most common thing, at least that's the case here, right? So that's the fly story. Fly in their name. But this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off, but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Agility? Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for haltiers, 
a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and also enables predator fly variants such as the robber fly to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head-on, but are unable to effectively counterattack during flight. However, most flies are either scavengers or parasites, using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed the... to weave oh, past the defenses the and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have, and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. Dragonfly, yes. The Dragonfly is similar to the Crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. It's already such an efficient build that across several balance patches and game expansions, the Dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary, as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about- What I love about this is that ancestors doing the drag- uh, no. Dinosaur times, I just said dragon times. Dinosaur times were actually bigger ones, right? Bigger version of them. And these are just descendant of that, but smaller version. That is so fucking awesome. But anything the devs throw at it. So what is it about the Dragonfly that has given it such a competitive edge? Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most like insects, helicopter, dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that direction, meaning they can strafe this flight and even fly backwards. <laughs> this ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, dragonflies have eyes. also stepped into it is. what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head, granting them full 360-degree vision. This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. Unlike many of the other builds on this list, which either have a- Is this whole video about f frogs being just stupid, just jumping and just tumbling down on their face? <laughs> powerful larval form, but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable early game, yeah. the Dragonfly is a high-tier predator in both forms. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, Dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to one-shot similarly-sized oh, yeah, fish yeah, aquatic, and amphibian right? players. Now, oh yeah, what, I remember that. I'm pretty sure that Zoom made a video about that too that I watched. Yeah, before reaching the adult form, they're actually in the water, right? That you you wouldn't think that right you you see dragonfly flying around you wouldn't think that look before that before it became this it used to be aquatic that just fucked up. <laughs> While it was tempting to put dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding Ooh. accidentally flying into dangerous situations. They're easily trapped by spiderwebs and are yeah. often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, drag spiders are like spiders are like I'm the ultimate killer here. You ain't shit. Come to my web. I mean, spiders are so terrifying because they actually lay traps, which is their web, right? It's like a trap. Anything walks into it is like ooh, food. This is why lots of films and movies uses that, right? I mean, Skyrim's first fucking mission is that, right? You are supposed to fight this uh, giant spider. <laughs> Dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. Not that devastating of a weakness, but it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. What's S? First in S tier we have the beetle. Beetles. The beetle is the epitome of the insect build. A bunch of okay. extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, yet somehow actually end up synergizing unbelievably well. Beetles are the premier tanks of the insect faction with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. Oh, that's It right. has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage, something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. Yeah. Now, typically when a I mean, you can survive an ant attack. I mean, by now I know how dangerous ants are in this insect world, right? Insect, whatever. Yeah, so... But I mean, ants are insect, right? Yeah. 
So are, they are going to be in the S tier, right? I'm pretty sure they are going to be. If ants are not in S tier, who's going to be? Mosquitoes and ants, I think. I don't know. Ants are uh, inside, right? I'm pretty sure they're inside. I don't know. There's always these technicalities like, uh, you know, spiders are arachnids, not uh, insects or whatever. I don't know the technicalities. Is heavily invested into defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several other metrics. The most obvious of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to bulldoze opponents with their forward-facing weaponry is hard to overstate, so fight. <laughs> but in my opinion, their real damage potential comes from beetles which possess the ability to blast their attackers with a toxic or acidic chemical burst. Look at the ant, like, dude, but that's dude. not where the craziness stops, because although you'd probably expect a high-power tank to be a slow, lumbering build, beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. And if that weren't enough, Despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, packing a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to move objects far, far above their weight class, the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, yeah. both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles have essentially every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes Okay, I, I'm not gonna lie, I did not know about this, that beetles are this OP. But holy shit, they're tanky. I mean, there's a reason why beetles are famous to begin with, right? Uh, beetles are tanky, they are also strong. I know about the, you know, those claws, right, the two claws. I mean, lots of fantasy genres uses beetles as an example to create different type of things, right? It makes sense. And they can fly too. I mean, there's this OP right there. That's like three list. Agility by flying, power by those claws, and defense by those, uh, you know, hard you know, shell there. So, of course, they're going to be OP. The insect faction is so powerful. And so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. Whoa. They're so versatile and adaptable that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities is, ultimately the beetle is, is still this? lacking the most powerful insect. Why does this feel like those Chinese movies, right? Where they just jump from, you know, tree branches from branches, similar to that, you know, fighting in the side of the tree. Just, you know, using the kind of, that kind of action camera and the music in the background. Fight! Insect ability of them all new sociality. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Now, technically, termites are a variant of the cockroach build, but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is the longest lived insect in the game, with a lifespan near that of a human or elephant. And it spends these many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to construct some of the most well-fortified bases in the game, what the giving fuck? even beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run for their money. Not only do they build incredible bases, but termites literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. Termites made those shit? What? I don't know termite mounds, but those are termite mounds, are those big ass shit, holy... I didn't see that coming. Look at the ridiculous how small things can create larger things like this. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge army and command vast territories. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, dealing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy now powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. 
not usually an issue as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation which covers the weak points of individual members. So certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial insect Oh, wait a minute. Oh, mic was off. Uh, aren't mosquitoes insects? Why are they not part of this? I thought it was going to be mosquitoes there on the STL. I don't know. But yeah, wasps, bees make sense. Insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well rounded, having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and rear facing weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasp's signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. I am you social hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can oh. capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Yep. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics. I saw the video about ants. There are three videos from Khuzgazar, the science channel, right? Those videos just made me think like, just changed my whole view of ants. I never gave a thought to ants. Like ants are this just nuisance. Like, yeah, sure, they are like, they, they are workers. Everybody knows that they're trait. Right, they can lift a lot of weight and they work in unison. But I had no fucking idea how they function like that. How complex they are, how they battle. So those three videos from Kuzgaz are just epic. Right? So after seeing that, like, I, you know, as soon as I saw ants, I knew they were going to be in S tier. They have to be. If they are not in S tier, who's going to be? Often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. Projects. So, while beetles may take <laughs> yeah. up a larger percentage of total insect variants, yeah. termites and ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's mm. no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. Obviously. In fact, the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony, but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without- Yeah, how bad as ants are that even spiders, mantis, they're like, we have to disguise as them and just basically infiltrate them to get all the shit they have. How successful you have to be to do that? ...using NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. As you browse, it. trackers latch onto your- Yeah, people, go to nordvpn.com for us tier zoo and support this channel. This channel is really, really fucking good, right? This is the first animal zoology channel I ever reacted to, started react to, and since then, my knowledge of any animal insect has just gone up, because there was none before, so whatever I have is much higher than before. So yeah, the insect tail is, I, I thought mosquitoes are an insect, right? I don't know, man. And mosquitoes are the biggest predators in the world, why are they not in this list? I don't know. But yeah, definitely ant is top. Beetle surprised me, but it makes sense when you, when you list those abilities, like all three. Agility by flying, right? Armor and the claws. That would definitely make you nastier. So yeah, this was fucking awesome. Dragonflies being eight here, I mean, yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, you would think that they're going to be S tier, but yeah, obviously seeing what they're competing against, yeah, EA is about right. But yeah, damn. Right, people, that was the insect tier list. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. I've done, uh, you know, b b lots of tier zoo reactions. They are in the, you know, check out the link in the description. They are there somewhere, I guess. Or just search with CG reaction in the end. You'll probably find it. But yeah, I'll see you next time.